Welcome, welcome everybody on Zoom webinar, which, which is registered more than 100 people and uh, significantly Facebook li uh, live uh, platform, thousand people are coming from all over the world. What a timely event one day before the opening ceremony of Tokyo Olympic. My name is Rie and a British Malaysian Society member and today's event organizer and your MC. As you all know, Japan has encountering unprecedented uh, COVID virus, a uh, worldwide challenge. And still going on, I remember myself participating in uh, Rio de Janeiro, the Olympic and Paralympic 2016 as a language in interpret Peter Borantier for 90 days. Lots of athletes and volunteers withdrew because of Zika virus. Now 2020 and 2021, again, Corona virus. What a world we are living now. Let me tell you, the British Malaysian Society Chairman, May Sim, and I are discussing about this Japan event before COVID. And actually, actual preparation started this March. Today's event is sheer amazing teamwork. And also, I proudly present lineup of magnificent Japanese culture experts here today. First, I would like to invite British Malaysian Society Chairman May Sim Lai OBE. Now, May Sim, over to you. Maysim, unmute yourself. Where is Maysim? Excuse me, Martin, can you uh, start speaking? Okay, um, I'm Martin Barrow. Martin Barrow okay. is a, tourism, a Japanese tourism ambassador, Martin Barrow CBE. Great to be all with you all today. And uh, my first visit to Japan was um, in 1964, and it was love at first sight when I got there, as it was in many other parts of, of Asia, including Malaysia. It was just wonderful. And I later lived and worked there for many years. I've been a Visit Japan ambassador since 2008 and a Cool Japan ambassador since 2016. I'm confident there'll be a quick recovery once we move on from COVID, both with Japan tourism and elsewhere. All over the world, I've never met anyone disappointed with a visit to Japan. And those who have not been always say, it's on my list, I so want to go. Let me summarize Japan and make you give you five key points on the strengths of Japan under the message of Japan Endless Discovery. Firstly, spirit and hospitality, omotenashi. The welcoming kindness of people in Japan will go out, they'll go out of their way to help visitors. It will certainly be at its best during the Olympics, looking after all the uh, people coming, all the participants, despite the COVID challenge, as it was during the Rugby World Cup two years ago. Secondly, tradition across the country. The wonderful culture covers everything from spectacular temples to hot springs, tea ceremonies, and of course, wonderful food and sake. Washoku, the traditional Japanese dietary culture has been added to the intangible cultural heritage of humanity list by UNESCO. Thirdly, cool Japan fusion with tradition. 
school can cover everything, not just manga and anime. Many people around the world will describe sushi as cool. It does not need to be overdefined. Looking at parts of Tokyo, Shibuya is the world's busiest crossroads. Akihabara is the gadget center of the world. Fourthly, nature, the beauty of Japan from south to north. Over 70% is countryside, hills and mountains everywhere. Plenty of opportunities to visit wonderful hot springs and enjoy hiking and skiing. Fifthly, good value and accessibility. Great value amongst hotels, food, transport across the country, and efficient transport links everywhere. In conclusion, I'm sure we will see increased travel links between Malaysia and Japan and the rest of the world. And I hope all of you will have the opportunity to visit if you haven't been there so far. Many thanks. Thank you, Martin Balo, CB. Now, I would like to invite the chairman of British Malaysian Society, Mason Lai OBE. Mason, over to you and unmute yourself. Thank you very much, Ria, and thank you, Martin. So greetings to you all from London and a very warm welcome to our Japan Day for BMS event. The UK and Malaysia have well established and for many years. With Brexit, the UK has to look east more. And Malaysia has always looked east Since 1980s and before that, a lot of research has been put into today's event, uh, which will no doubt strengthen and deepen our understanding of Japan and its culture and traditions. We have a super panel of strong credentials uh, to speak on the various topics. So I greatly look forward to what is going to be in store for the next hour or so. And I hope that you will very much enjoy the Japan Day for BMS. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mei Sim. Now I would like to invite uh, Japanese Embassy uh, Minister Ito's welcome remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. Allow me first to extend my sincere appreciation to the British Malaysian Society for hosting this Japan Day event. Although the past year has created many difficulties and obstacles for people in their daily lives, it is events like this one today that allows us to initiate or maintain connections and I am honored to speak here. Japan and Malaysia enjoy a distinctive and mutually beneficial relationship with successful engagement and collaboration in many areas, including manufacturing, education, tourism, infrastructure development, and maritime security. Next year will be the 40th anniversary since the introduction of the Look East policy, which has enabled 17,000 Malaysians to study in Japan and to utilize the skills learned in leading roles back in Malaysia. Around 1,500 Japanese companies are now operating in Malaysia and in the manufacturing sector alone, Japanese companies employ more than 340,000 people in Malaysia. Visiting tourist figures between our two countries have been strong and we hope that these numbers bounce back to pre-COVID levels. 
In the immediate aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic in Malaysia, Japan swiftly provided assistance, including PPE and food supplies to the so socially vulnerable population in Malaysia through international organizations such as UNICEF and UNHCR. Japan also provided Avigan tablets for clinical trial last year and signed an agreement to provide advanced medical equipment for the benefit of the Malaysian people. The support has been reciprocated from Malaysia with the swift importation of PPE playing a vital role in protecting frontline workers in Japan. The Malaysian government has also permitted the export of medical equipment and PPEs manufactured by Japanese companies in Malaysia. Now, more than ever, examples of cooperation such as these help East Asian nations to overcome the challenges that face the region in the current climate. Tomorrow, the opening ceremony for the Tokyo Olympic Games will take place. Despite the challenges posed by COVID-19, Japan will host Tokyo 2020 safely and securely by working closely with all the relevant organizations, including the International Olympic Committee, and taking all necessary measures so that it would be a symbol of global unity in overcoming COVID-19. I wish Malaysian athletes every success at Tokyo 2020, but especially in the disciplines where they do not rival Japan for the chance of winning a medal. Today, you will see an exciting program featuring talented performers and culture experts. I thank the organizers for their hard work and dedication in making today's event possible. I hope you will all enjoy this event and it helps deepen your understanding of Japanese culture leading to strengthened ties between our two countries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Ito. <clears throat> yes, as Minister Ito said, we have a lineup of very attractive presentations. Look forward to it. Before that, our team, the technical team uh, member, Kazuma, is going to explain to us house rule announcement. Over to you, Kazuma. Thank you, Lie. I'm Kazuma. And before jumping into performances, I would like to make a couple of announcements. First, we highly recommend that you adjust to maximize the volume of your computer so that you will find it easier to hear the presenter's voice. Second, if you have any questions during the event, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A box, which you can find at the bottom of your screen. Also, if you have any troubles or anything you want to tell us, please write them in the chat box. You can also find it at the bottom of your screen and I will be responding to them throughout the event. Um, finally, I just want to let you know that we will have a quick questionnaire about this event in the end. Thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoy the event. Thank you. Thank you, Kazuma. And uh, any, anybody who wants to connect uh, with us, please, uh, put your details, contact details here. I will do so as well, so that we can connect all over the world virtually. And we are very happy to bring the Japan Day event for any countries. There now is a borderless. Now, the magnificent attractive presentation time start. First, most delicious Japanese food so Mr. Hammer, Team Hammer is going to present uh, uh, delicious food. Over to you, Mr. Hammer. Hi, good afternoon, and members of BMS and friends. Uh, it is a beautiful day in London, and I hope you enjoy this uh, uh, cultural uh, event. My Mr. Hammer, could you Hama. speak up a little bit? Yeah, my name is Tetsuro Hammer. I'm a chairman of. Japanese Culinary Academy UK and the Sozai Cooking School. Eating is important element of the culture. I've been living in this country nearly 50 years. That time, 
Hardly no one knows Japanese culture and food. Nobody knows sushi, and I have to tell customers how to use chopsticks. Anyway, to begin with today's Japanese cultural event, let me introduce Sozai Cooking School. At Sozai Cooking School, you can join in online or real class, as well as you can hire the class for your family, friends, or any corporate event. So let me introduce Izzy. She is the head of instructor at Sozai. Just before that, uh, uh, we uh, will show you very short uh, video of uh, Sozai's cooking school. Thank you. Over to you. My name is Izzy, I'm from Sozai Cooking School and um, thank you for introducing us and having us. How have you been? I'm so busy working and making a sushi. Can you see my uh, screen here? Uh, Mary, could you, um, with the pin, yeah, please. Imagine that if you make sushi like this at home, we are here for you. Please connect online, then, then we teach you everything from scratch. We do the chef training and everything, but this is yummy. Sushi made at home. So what about this gorgeous rose? <laughs> rose sushi, we call it rose sushi. It's so easy to do. First of all, this is cooked sushi rice. Just plain white sushi rice. Don't worry if you never made sushi before. We will show you from scratch at the class how to cook, how to wash, how to color, which is, I used um, beetroot. Suddenly, <laughs> sushi rice got prettier when you got pink sushi rice. And if you find it difficult to get salmon or sushi grade fish, what about using the smoked salmon? Smoked salmon is available from your uh, supermarket, local supermarket. So I'm going to put this, round them as possible, you'd be surprised. Here we go. By the way, this rectangular shape, egg omelette made by this. Japanese egg omelette frying pan. I even then show you how to do it in the class. So just roll it, simple, like this. Haha, <laughs> here you go. Now, makisu. We, um, we give you lots of tips to make sushi at home. For example, using this cling film. And now I'm going to spread. Oops. 
my lovely. Now I'm going to spread my sushi rice onto the nori. What is your favorite Japanese food? Please let us know. We will create your class, special private classes available. You can connect your colleague, uh, the other side of the world. <laughs> There's so fun things to do. So just simply split the rice. Then this egg roll coming on here. Cucumber sticks. Always nice to be in a sushi. And how simple is that? Now you got to roll like this. Attack. We have got ramen specialist. You have got miso specialist. So we will um, help you to recreate Japan taste. Wouldn't be amazing if you have your own made Japanese food at home and you're watching the Olympic, isn't it? Here we go. Here we go. Now it's rolled. I know it looks rough, but don't worry. This is homemade sushi. Get away. Now we need to cut. When you cut sushi, make sure your knife's wet and let the blade wet. This is going to be my taste. Oh, not wasting anything. Cut it. Cut in a half. Like this. There we go. Let's see. Road sushi. How simple is this? And uh, treat your family and your guest. Come to us to learn Japanese food. It's so easy to do. Thank you. Liz, and have I got more time to do? Yes, you, you can. Okay. Because this is one of the top attractions <laughs> for all audience uh, attendees. Please go ahead. Fantastic. So this is, here we go, i show you. This is Hemari Sushi, which is easy to do. First of all, you need to have fish. On the cream film, if you like wasabi, do you use wasabi? I've got fresh wasabi. Have you ever seen fresh wasabi? Lovely wasabi paste on my fish. Then I have sushi rice on the fish. Now you know almost what I'm going to do. Make a bowl. So rest. Now this is Camarillo. This is fantastic canapé. Treat your guests with your canapé. If you'd like, you can put some decoration. I have got lovely avocados here. Lovely avocados. On the top of salmon. What about lemon? What about tiny bits of Caviar. This is colored caviar. The other one is user flavor. There we go. What do you think? <laughs> so this is just a part of quick sushi making. Oh, mine's got too much fillings in it. So can I go back to Riesa? Thank you, Izzy. What a magnificent attractive. Everybody is so hungry. Even the Gavin is now shouting, I need this sushi. This is so, so and then when you have a sushi, we cannot forget the one important ingredient, which is 
Japanese sake. Oh, now I'm proudly invite Marie for ex she is expert of the wine and sake and shochu and she has been asked to be a judge and invited all over the world for the competition. Now over to you Marie. Hello everybody thank you. Um, uh, Mary would you push it on yeah thank you. Um, good afternoon to fellow B BMS members, friends, and uh, everybody and, and anybody that I know who's on today in the UK and Europe. And of course, good evening to friends in Malaysia and Japan. And if we've got anybody from the Americas, it's a good morning. Very honored to be here today as a Penangite and fellow Malaysian. A big thank you to Rie um, for who has literally single-handedly organized this wonderful event. Shige-san of Tonoike Brewery and I would like to welcome you to this wonderful world of sake. My name is Marie um, and uh, I am, as Rie says, um, a judge, a writer, and both into food and um, sake. You can contact me for, as you can see on the slide. Okay, without further ado, sake, a washu, washu meaning uh, uh, a drink from Japan is very, very special and has been drunk for centuries. It was in fact brought to Japan by the Chinese. The first sakes were technically made by young maidens chewing on grains of barley, wheat, rice, anything starchy and spat into a bowl. Yes, that's how alcohol was originally made. And uh, in the early days, thousands of years ago, sake was actually eaten as a sort of gruel, a porridge, rather than drunk. This method was actually called kamakuchi, and uh, it was eventually banned in Japan uh, in the 18th century. Today, home brewing in Japan is still illegal, so there's no making of sake at home. Malaysia, however, we, we are allowed to make a kind of rice wine and Chinese rice wine that's brewed at home uses a similar method and but simpler uh, to sake making. Uh, today, there are about 1,200 sake breweries left in Japan and uh, sake is made all over the world, including three breweries in um, the UK. Sake is drunk and enjoyed by many, both socially, during ceremonies and for celebrations. Next slide, please. Now let's look, what is sake? Sake is an alcoholic drink popular in Japan. It's normally called Nihon Shu. It is less acidic, more alcoholic, cleaner and often sweeter than wine and beer. It can be crystal clear, cloudy, murky, sparkling, or a combination of all four. Sometimes a little alcohol is added to the fermenting marobi or mash a few days before pressing just to absorb extra um, esters that otherwise would be lost in water when it's pressed. Lactic acid is always used to keep the mash healthy, but it doesn't seem to worry people who are lactose intolerant. Sake being slightly less acidic, slightly sweeter and full of umami never fights with food. There will always be a sake for whatever occasion and for whatever you're eating um, in Japan. And having looked at the wonderful food that um, Sozai Kukri School and Izzy has made, you can certainly pick a bottle of sake to match it. Next slide, please. Next question. The difference between sake, wine and beer. As you can see, slightly different for wine for centuries, Grapes are grown, crushed, added with yeast, and normal fermentation, natural fermentation takes place, and you get a lovely bottle of wine. For beer, slightly more complicated. You've got a cereal. You haven't got the sugar that the yeast can work on. So technically, the cereal has got to be malted and then put into water and sort of heated up to become a, um, a wort. And then you get uh, a sugary solution of which yeast can work on to produce beer. As for sake, as you can see, it's complicated. And after my chat, there will be a video um, that will show you how sake is made. 
next slide, please. Categories of sake. Technically, there are eight categories of sake based on the rice grain polishing and whether alcohol has been added. Pretty simple, you think, but there you go. So you have got normal sake, non-premium called futsushu. This is the sake that most people drink around the world. 80% of the sake made today is futsushu. Then you've got premium sakes and the categories are called honjozo, junmai, ginjo, junmai ginjo, daiginjo, and junmai daiginjo, depending on the amount of rice left on the grain. And lastly, tokabetsu, which means special, is used for certain sakes that has been had a little extra special thing done to it, whether the polishing rate is slightly higher or something special added to it. Next slide, please. And here, just to show you some examples of types of sake available, as I said to you, it can be sparkling, it can be cloudy, it can be unpasteurized, it can be um, undiluted, different styles, different ways of making. So plenty of sakes that you can find worldwide. Next slide, please. For the professionals out there, you're gonna ask me, how does one taste sake? Here you are. You taste sake with three different methods. First with your eye, then your nose, and then the taste. And from there, you get your aromas, your tastes. And when we judge, this is roughly the kind of stuff we will find in sakes. Take a snapshot if you like. This was made, this was actually created by Utsunomiya Sensei uh, in Japan for that method. Next slide, please. Sake culture in Japan. As Martin says, in Japan, omotenashi is very important, the art of hospitality. It is used for eating, drinking, and in every aspect of the Japanese culture to be respectful, to understand your um, clients and your friends. So in terms of sake, normally you're allowed to pick a glass or a vessel of your choice. This little cup called a cho choco can be made of glass, porcelain, ceramic, clay, even wood, and it comes in different shapes and sizes. You pick your own glass, depending on how you feel on that night. And rule number two, you never pour your own sake. Always rely on good friends or the server to pour ample sake in your glass to, to overfill it, to show the hospitality. So please enjoy sake with friends who will think of you and who will pour for you. And the rule of thumb, temperature of sake drinking. The better the sake, the colder you drink it. And I've just shown a little chart there, um, which again, in your spare time, take a snapshot now and please feel free to use it. Next slide, please. Just a bit of trivia. World alcohol toler tolerance. Like yourselves, a lot of you out there, Malaysians, we're predominantly Chinese. Only 50% of Chinese in the world have got this um, aldehyde dehydrogenase that can digest alcohol in our bodies. Now, if you are German, Egyptian, um, Jewish, or Kenyan, feel free to drink as much as you want. You always, and chances are 100% of the population have got this uh, enzyme that can break, uh, break down alcohol. And just lastly, durian. In, in Malaysia, a lot of us Chinese eat a lot of durian, and through the years, our elders have always told us not to drink alcohol. There is a reason for this, and that is that uh, uh, durian has got this chemical that breaks down L aldehyde dehydrogenase, which in turn makes the body unable to break down alcohol. So that is why your grandmother says, do not drink alcohol when you eat durian. So take that heed. It is pretty much true. And finally, in conclusion, next slide, please. I want to say, kampai to everybody. Anybody who's got a glass of sake in front of you, cheers, kampai. I have got water. And thank you for listening to me. I am now going to hand over to Shige san, owner of Tonoike Brewery. Thank you, everybody. Hi, this is my name is Shigeki Tonaike. 
Hello, everybody, and hello, BMS members. Thank you very much, Lies and Marisan. My name is Shigeki Tonoike. I'm a brewery owner uh, nearby Tokyo. I make Japanese sake, brand name is Sanran. Today, uh, I can uh, inform you uh, good news. We got the gold award at the French contest today. Uh, Congratulations! Really Thank you very much. You can drink the, my Sanran sake uh, in Japan and as well as uh, London. So we look forward to your coming to Japan after COVID-19. Uh, my brewery is uh, 100 kilometer north from Tokyo. Very uh, easy to come. And you can enjoy the authentic rural Japanese uh, living style. Look for your coming. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shige. Thank you, Marie. Uh, I am Sake Master, all thanks to Marie's kind teaching. And uh, I can't wait to visit Tonoike Brewery in Japan next year or so. With anybody who wants to join me, please get in touch with me. My all the contact details in the chat box. And don't worry, everybody, you might be overwhelmed by contents or from the presentations. However, today's event will be on the YouTube, Facebook recorded, so you can learn by watching again and again. So please check uh, chat box because all presenters are sharing their contact details and website. Now, I would like to invite a fellow uh, British Malaysian Society member and the Malaysia, uh, same as Marie is coming uh, from the, um, Pu where, where is it, Marie? Um, and uh, Penang. Scott, I'm a Penangite. I'm sorry, I'm from Penang. Penang. I'm from Penang, so Penangite here. Penangite. Now over to you, Scott. Yep. Hi. Uh, good day and good afternoon and good evening to all who are participating in this BMS event. My name is Scott, and I'm the owner of Haji Sun Limited. And today I'll be giving you a brief introduction into Japanese tea. Yep. Uh, Marie. Yep, so what is Japanese tea? Um, we have all probably drank and tasted Japanese tea, but how much do we really know about Japanese tea? Here are some of the basic information to know. Next slide. Yep, so to begin with, ryokucha. What is ryokucha? Uh, ryokucha is Japanese tea. Uh, simply, it simply means green tea in Japanese. And this includes a variety varieties of um, uh, teas such as sencha, matcha, hojicha, etc. Yokuro included. And moving on to sencha, which is the most common tea that you will find and drink in Japan and around the world. Sencha is a type of rokucha, as I mentioned. Uh, it's grown without blocking the sunlight um, throughout its entire cultivation process. <clears throat> the, the leaves are picked and are first steamed, then rolled, shaped, and dried. The result is a tea with a moderate astringent taste and a refreshing aroma. It is the most loved tea in Japan and accounts for over 80% of the tea produced in the country. Yep. Now, what you may not know is that there are actually three types of Japanese tea uh, with different processing methods and taste profiles. To begin with, the first one, which you probably would have drank, is Asamushi. Asamushi is the common type of tea that you find in Japan and uh, mostly to do with sencha, it has a clear, vibrant, and greenish amber color. Asamushi is also lightly steamed during its processing method, and its taste profile is very light and has a subtle mummy flavor with a, a sweet aroma, a sweet floral aftertaste. Uh, Chumushi, which is medium steam, it has a slightly darker green and slightly uh, cloudy, uh, slightly cloudy. Chumushi is uh, a bit hard to find in the UK, but it, one of its key characteristics is that it's ha it has a savory and balanced umami flavor. 
and has a little bit of a light vegetable stock uh, taste. And the most rarest one in the UK, uh, but you can most, most definitely find it in Japan, especially in Shizuoka, is Fukamushi. So Fukamushi is a heavier full, bod uh, full body tea and can be identified by its dark green color and cloudy appearance. Fukamushi is deeply steamed during the processing method. And by doing so, this gives the tea a deeper, bolder umami flavor and has a stronger vegetable taste. So if you do like vegetable stock, this is the tea for you. Um, next. So how to pre prepare Japanese tea? There are various methods and utensils you use to prepare Japanese tea. However, today I'm going to take you through the basics of and common methods of sencha and matcha. So the utensils used for sencha, and this includes genmai cha, hoju cha, and the like. Uh, what you'll need is a kyusu, otherwise known as a teapot. Uh, in this case, we'll be using an obiami, uh, which means steel belt, and it will help filter the tea and allow you to get that golden drop that contains all its nutrients and flavor, which you'll see in the video shortly. Um, next, you'll also need a samishi. Uh, this is to help cool the water temperature. Teacups, which will be based on the amount your teapot can handle, and your selection of sencha. Uh, next slide. And now we'll present to you the preparation for sencha. So that is basically the basics of how to make sencha. Uh, but what you may notice is that we mentioned to bring the temperature down to 80 degrees. Now, this is the best temperature to consume sencha or any other Japanese tea. Um, this enables you to actually appreciate both the aroma and the taste of tea. Whereas if you boil it at 100 degrees, it may, be, it may have a greater aroma, but you'll lose out on the taste. Now onto the utensils for matcha. As for matcha, you'll see you need a chawan, which is a bowl to hold your uh, matcha powder, a cha sen, which is a bamboo whisk, and a regular bowl to soften the cha sen with warm water before use. Um, a cha shaku, which is a, uh, a bamboo spoon, though not necessarily needed if you don't have one, and some matcha. Yep. And now on to the video.
Yeah, and that's how you prepare Japanese, uh, I mean, matcha, sorry. So what you may notice is that we did use a sieve to distribute the matcha. Uh, the reason why we did this is to smooth out the matcha so that you won't have a lot of lumps. But you don't need to have a sieve. You don't have it. All you need to do is have a good whisk uh, and you have a smooth um, matcha at the end of the day. Now, there are other ways to enjoy Japanese tea and it being summer right now. And for those in hotter countries like Malaysia or countries where it's hot, like Japan at this point in time, where it's summer, um, there are other ways to enjoy Japanese tea uh, other than the regular method. You can enjoy Japanese tea on the rocks. You can enjoy it cold brewed as a latte. And for those who want a little bit of a kick, uh, you can enjoy it as sencha hai, which is a sochu sencha cocktail. Next. Now, pairing the lights, what I mean by this is that normally you pair Japanese food with uh, different foods and some foods work well with Japanese tea. Uh, in, my, in this case, you here are some of the desserts and some foods that you may be familiar with. My personal favorite is actually ochazuki or as they would call it, buguzuki in Kyoto. So it's basically uh, rice um, topped off with um, Japanese tea, uh, sencha or genmai cha and has maybe a side of mackerel, fish, or um, uh, unagi, which is eel. Yep, thanks. Yep, and that concludes the presentation for Japanese tea. I hope you all have enjoyed it. Do visit us on our website for more information and range of our teas, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to get the latest on flavors, recipes, and other Japanese food and culture. Thank you for your time, and have a good day. Yeah, unmute yourself. Thank you, Scott. Amazing fact about Scott is he has been trained in Japan by his tea master from scratch. He knew nothing about Japanese tea. Now here he is, and he is uh, producing the tea on selling online. So please take a look at his website. Now, I do apologize to everybody because of all the presentation of food and sake and the tea, you must be starving. So I'm gonna give you five minutes for uh, uh, hydrating, for drinking water or some snacks, just five minutes. While you, uh, please come back in five minutes. And while you are on the toilet or uh, break, we will show you the Japanese dance by one of my mo most respected Japanese dance teacher, Mrs. Hiroko Tanaka. Over to you, Hiroko. <laughs>
Thank you for coming back here. I'm sure you enjoy Japanese traditional dance. Now, I'm going to invite all of you a dynamite, amazing one of the uh, top presentation by uh, Mamiko Sato traditional dress kimono presentation and fashion show. Now over to you, Mamiko. Thank you for inviting me to Japan Day for BMS. This is Mamiko Sato from Kimono Dego, London. Kimono Dego provide all kinds of service, including and makeup dressing and kimono length. We also provide perform with perfect kimono style, commercial and culture introduction. 
Kimono Lego's concept always challenged the possibility of fusion of Japanese culture and Western culture. At your request, Kimono Lego also takes geisha style and regular kimono style photography in London. So please feel free to contact us anytime. I will be looking forward to working with you. Thank you.
We okay, unmute yourself. Sorry, um, what an amazing speechless presentation. We did rehearsal four times. And every time when I watch this amazing, I was so fell in love with it. And then indeed, we did receive a comment from Lion Soul. This is so well prepared and awesome. The Stephanie Van Driesen says, really enjoying this event. And Jeffrey Harvey said, Rie, I'm falling in love with Japan. Thank you very much for all your feedback. And uh, Mamiko has been uh, working for TV work for BBC and uh, Japan Matsuri Trafalgar Square and then Japanese designers and then fashion show demonstrations at fashion show and London Textile Museum and the Victoria Albert Museum. So anybody who fancy to wear kimono for special occasion, uh, please uh, check the Mamiko's website and then get in touch with her. Now, I would like to uh, introduce Akari Mochizuki and then Hibiki Ichikawa, both singers and the musicians are well known in Japan, Japanese community. They also appeared many, many events. So uh, now I would like you to enjoy Japanese traditional song. Over to you, Akari and Hibiki. Hello everybody, my name is Akari Mochizuki and my nickname is Mochi. I am the Japanese singer based in London. Today I would like to sing with Hibiki's uh, shamisen, but please introduce yourself, Hibiki. Hello everybody, my name is Hibiki Ichikawa. I'm from Canada City. I'm based in the UK since 2011. I play Japanese instrument called Tsugaru Shamisen. Okay, so first of all, I would like to sing a song called Soranbushi. And Soranbushi is a very famous Japanese folk song from Hokkaido, northern part of Japan. And this song is about a fishing of herrings. And in the song, people say, Dokkuisho, Dokkuisho, together. So please say dokkuisho, dokkuisho when you feel like it. So let me just okay, play also taiko as well. So let's enjoy. The first song is called Soran Bushi. about how Hibiki decided to move to the UK and now based in London. Yes. You know, I usually perform in the UK and also teaching as well. 
So now currently I have 30 students at the moment. But since I moved to the UK, of course, uh, firstly there's no students. But after performance, some audience wanted to learn the shamisen. Then, you know, eventually number of the students is uh, increasing. So now it's a uh, 30 students. I'm not sure if I can speak English well or not, but you know, uh, people help me a lot since I moved here and I had many opportunities to perform uh, the shamisen. So this is, uh, you know, I, I have really confidence. Mm. And uh, lots of countries that you have visited so far? Yes, so far I have been uh, over uh, 20 countries. Mm, some part is quite difficult because uh, you know sometimes it's a uh, uh, delay, delay. <laughs> delay, and also you know I want to teach from behind the students, but it's possible, impossible to teach mm. like an online lesson. Mm. Hibiki is going to give you a special performance as a solo piece. Uh, he is going to uh, show you the mixture of two different countries, the UK and Japan, uh, since he is the only professional player uh, of Tsugaru Shamisen, this instrument in the whole Europe, and he has had lots of opportunities to collaborate with the musicians from all over the world, and he made uh, his original pieces influenced by the songs from outside of Japan, and this is one of them. Firstly, he is going to perform the, the song called Chemical Element, which is the, the song sounding of Tsugaru Shamisen, Japan, but uh, sounds like rock music. So this is what he's going to perform.
How was it? I hope you liked it. Now I would like to join him back again uh, with my singing. I met Hibiki uh, when I was well, I was working in a Japanese publisher. There was a mutual friend uh, between us and he introduced Hibiki to me. And I was working as an anchor singer, the only anchor singer in the UK. But now um, I started uh, becoming more and more interested in Japanese folk music and training myself as a minyo singer. Uh, today, I would like you to feel energized by the songs uh, based in uh, Japan, originally from uh, lots of different areas and uh, cities. I would like you to enjoy the different songs of bone dance music. I'm going to firstly take you to Yamagata Prefecture. Yamagata is northeast of Japan, and there they have a song called Hanagasa Ondo. And Hanagasa Ondo means flower hat dance. Uh, they use flower hat to dance along with the uh, the people and say yasho makkasho in the song so if we say ha everybody say yasho makkasho together second i would like you to enjoy the capital city of japan tokyo ondo tokyo ondo is one of the most famous japanese bond dance music that everybody in japan recognizes and this song, everybody say yoi yoi in the song. Can you say yoi yoi? Yoi yoi. Yes. So when I probably indicate uh, when you are going to say yoi yoi, so please enjoy Tokyo Ondo. And finally, I will take you to the south part of Japan, Fukuoka Prefecture, where they have a great coal mine. And the song is called Tanko Bushi. In the song again, Everybody says yoi yoi, but I would not, I might be able to tell you when to do it, but just within the song. So please feel the groove and say yoi yoi together. So hope you enjoy our bone dance medley. So let's start from Hanagasa Ondo. Sam hai.
Thank you, Akari and Hibiki. I do apologize for sound. We are aware of the speaking was a little bit too quiet. We did our best to maximize. However, uh, the, the gentleman was, uh, Hibiki was talking far away from the microphone. Please forgive us. And now I would like to invite the company director of Japan World Link, who lives in North Tokyo or Tochigi Prefecture. He is well known uh, organizer to look after the uh, foreigners who visit in Japan. Now over to you, Mr. Angus Miyagi. Hello, members of uh, BMS and friends. Thank you for inviting me to air. This is Angus Miyagi calling in from Tochigi, Japan, which is about two hours north of Tokyo. After listening to all of the wonderful presentations of food, sake, tea, culture, and music, I'm sure you're ready to book the next flight out to Japan as soon as the COVID restrictions are lifted. The typical a traveler to Japan will usually spend maybe two to three weeks exploring Tokyo and Kyoto and the Japanese countryside. Nowadays, most travelers want to also balance their, tra their trips, visiting well-known destinations, as well as exploring hidden gems where not many, other, uh, not many of their friends have been. So today, I would like to introduce you to two websites that offer information about these hidden, hidden gems near Tokyo. So I will type the URL in the chat box so you can have a look later. Let me just do that right now. Um, but I will take you to the bo both of the websites as well. Okay, so let's share my screen. Okay. The first website is nearbytokyo.com. As the name suggests, this website is dedicated to interesting destinations near Tokyo. And as you can see on this map, and it is aimed to provide interesting travel information for English speakers. Now, once you scroll down the map, you can also find different travel categories from um, active explorer to culture and history, to foodies paradise, seasonal beauties, all sorts of stuff. So inside a category, let's say we just click on um, this culture and history category so you will find subcategories to narrow down your interest. Now, click on a subcategory and you'll be able to read about where and when you can experience all these wonderful things near Tokyo. Now, back to the top page. Let me just, sorry, okay. Okay, under the categories, you will find um, events and festivals section. Here you can find English information about rare and authentic Japanese events and festivals that I'm sure you will enjoy. This information here is actually handwritten mostly by myself. Um, it's really hard to find this kind of information in English about Japanese festivals near Tokyo. So I've put together these different festivals. So if you're planning to come to Japan, please check this out and have a look at the different festivals and events that are going on while you're in Japan. So this is uh, nearbytokyo.com. And the other website that I just want to quickly introduce you to is sakevoyage.com. This website is dedicated to four sake breweries, um, including Tonoike Sake Brewery, who Tonoike-san uh, has a presentation today. Um, and these four breweries are just north of Tokyo uh, within a couple of hours, maybe two hours uh, from Tokyo. Now on this website, sorry, on this website, you will see um, different sake breweries and they have also bookings. So you can go and book the English uh, guides and tasting events that they have. And also you can listen to the, um, the what visitors have said. So we have all these visitors who've come to see us and they've talked about what their experience has been like. Also, one thing not to forget is sake goes very, pairs very well with food. So we have actually two very wonderful restaurants in, on this website that do sake pairing dinners. So if you're interested in sake, please also check out Sake Voyage and we hope to see you in Japan very soon. 
If you have any questions, please, please feel free to contact me through these websites. Thank you very much uh, for your time. And I look forward to seeing you in Japan. Please check out the uh, URLs in the chat box that I've posted. Thank you very much. Thank you, Angus. Despite of the late participation, but uh, he, you did a wonderful presentation. I'm proud of you, Angus. And in fact, Angus and Mr. Tonoike are waiting for me and my delegate to look after VIP tour in Japan. And the Maysim and the Maysim's friends, anybody who wants to join me, you are very, very welcome. Now, I would like to invite online virtual tour of Japan because uh, um, lots of people who asked me, Rie, I want to go to Tokyo Olympic to watch the game. Can you take me? Uh, can you find me the accommodation? Can you find me the nice place to visit? However, because of the COVID uh, virus, uh, none of the people who can watch as a spectator in stadium. Instead, everybody has to watch on uh, from in front of the TV in the lounge. That's okay. So because I'm asked to organize a unique culture visit to Japan, we made this video with Angus and Mr. Tonoike. Now I would like to invite you online tour of Japan. One more for the tour of food.
Are you an enthusiast of Japanese artworks and culture? Many say visiting a sake brewery works is the most ideal approach to find out about the Japanese craftsmanship and local culture. Here at Sake Brewery, Sake Voyage consists of four sake breweries. We have curated whole site committed to the public drink of Japan. We have made it simple for you to track down an inviting family run sake brewery close to Tokyo. Sake Voyage and find a fascinating society of making and drinking sake. Sake is a definitive branding body for a wide assortment of nourishment. No two sake are similar. Some duplicate the impression of umami for a vast flavor in your mouth, and others offer a delicate, exquisite, and divine experience when matched with the ideal accomplice. We are respected to have worked with the best culinary experts in Japan, including incredibly famous cook Kazunori Otowa. Uh, granted Chavariedo Odo Marie by the Public Authority of France in 2015 to produce the best sake branding dinner course in the world. While you stay in Japan, we enthusiastically suggest you attempt one of these multi courses meals, which are without a doubt among the top. Sake branding encounters in the world. Here's to once in the Blue Moon experience. Once in a lifetime chance. Please send inquiry to info at branchofwisdom.club or telephone in grand plus. 0044208354 Looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Azad Ayub and Adi, for kind comments. Really, really happy to hear you enjoyed. Now, oh, by the way, please on the right hand side, the bottom, you can save all the details, information, everybody's con contacts. When you see the next to the file, three dots, when you click the three dots, you can save the chat on your computer so that you don't lose all the contact. Okay. And uh, now we are coming to nearly end. And um, uh, we would like to invite Maisim Lai. Without her, this event could not be materialized. All thanks to Maisim's ceaseless uh, network and uh, wonderful charity event. Now, I invite Maisim Lai, over to you. Thank you very much indeed, Ria. And may I thank everyone that has been involved with this event. Uh, it's been wonderful, such a packed program uh, of culture, sake, uh, Japanese dance, music, uh, and travel to uh, Japan. So all sounds very interesting, lots for you all to think about. So I noticed that uh, today we are joined by many non-BMS members. 
So we welcome new members. So if you would like to sign up, do visit the BMS website. It takes five minutes to sign up as a BMS member uh, and enjoy a wonderful program of events like the one that uh, Ria and her team has put on for us today. Uh, I would also like to especially thank Kazuma, who has been dealing with all the technical aspects and working closely with Ria. And Kazuma is actually based in Japan. So uh, just finally, what do we have coming up as far as uh, BMS is concerned? So next week, we have our July Makan uh, eve networking evening. So Makan is eat. Uh, in Malay, Malaysians love to eat and a lot of Malaysians miss their food. So we will be having a gathering for members uh, and non-members and potential members at a Malaysian restaurant. Then on the 12th of August, we are doing a joint event with Talent Core uh, of Malaysia, who uh, became one of the corporate members of BMS a few months ago. And on the 21st of September, our international trade group is hosting a webinar on Malaysian SMEs uh, coming to the UK. So watch out for this space and uh, do look up our website. And once again, thank uh, Ria and her team and everyone involved with putting on this event. And finally, may I thank you all for uh, attending and hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have. Thank you. Thank you, Maysim, for kind words. Yes, I would like to thank all panelists. Uh, we worked since March and uh, many, many rehearsals, wonderful creation of the video. I am so proud of this event happening with all of you and especially my team, Kazuma and Mary. Mary, despite of living in the Philippines and then hard, very difficult net uh in internet nevertheless she worked very hard with beautiful unity and uh, as you know japan is well known teamwork i am so proud of my team work so uh, as you know tomorrow is going to be the opening ceremony of tokyo olympic i'm curious how tokyo olympic can compete with Queen parachuting down from the sky in 2012, London Olympic. Everybody is talking about how Japan will beat London or Rio de Janeiro. Now, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed. I would like to send you off by showing the promotion video. Yeah. Uh, Yes. Before the before the event is over, I would like to ask. Oh yes, that's right, uh, Kazuma. To over to you. Form. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Yes, Kazuma. Over to you. Yes. So everyone, as you can see on your screen, um, we ask everybody to complete the feedback form so that we can hear what you felt about today's event. Um, okay, sorry about this. And also, can you uh, put it in the chat box as well? Yes, I also already um, put the link to this feedback form in the chat box. So you can also access the um, feedback form from the link in the chat box. And you can also take the, um, the QR code, like scan the QR code and go to the feedback form. And we appreciate your cooperation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you fill in this feedback form, and then we will send you another event information and uh, interesting, attractive, um, for instance, Scots, the Japanese tea tasting or sake tasting or very attractive event information you will be able to receive. So now, thank you for coming. And now I'd like to send you off by showing the video and see you again and enjoy Tokyo Olympic and Paralympics. <laughs>